Hi, I'm Don Ferguson, the producer of Florida Keys Dive Odyssey, the video series that unveils the actual GPS coordinates of the top dive sites in the Florida Keys. Welcome to Keys Dive Guide, Volume 35. The ocean is a savage world. Small fish are eaten alive by larger fish. Eating another creature simply means survival. All living organisms in the sea, no matter how large or how small, will eventually provide sustenance for another creature in the ocean's food web. Today we're going to focus on the fish that call this semi-tropical reef line home. Let's begin with some of the smallest critters in the sea. Krill are massive aggregations of tiny crustaceans, often shrimp, found everywhere from the shallows out to the deep reef. These krill are swarming in various, uncoordinated directions. Swarming is a defensive maneuver, confusing predators that would find it easier to pick off stationary individuals. Krill are a favorite food of these juvenile French grunt, identified by their yellowish tint, which differentiates them from fish with similar markings. Moving up the food web are the larger one to three inch silver sides, a broad term used to cover many similar looking silvery fish like sardines, herring, anchovies, or scad. Determining the exact identities of these fish is difficult for divers, so they are lumped into the descriptive term silver sides. By congregating in schools, and signaling an endless succession of evasive movements, the flashing silver and darting misdirection make silver sides a difficult target for predators. Deep inside the hold of the Eagle Wreck, four and a half miles seaward of Isla Morada in a hundred feet of water, thousands of silver side evade a school of Blue Runner. Reaching a length of up to one foot, Blue runners seek protection in large schools on deep shipwrecks during the day. Copper sweepers, also known as hatchet fish, are cave and crevice dwellers during the day. Here within Christmas Tree Cave on French Reef offshore Key Largo is a large school of hatchet fish. Every evening, these hatchet fish will migrate from the safety of caves and ledges to feed in the plankton-rich outer reefs. The neon goby is a cleaner fish that associates with star coral. Larger fish welcome groups of neons to clean parasites off their extremities and even their mouths. This symbiotic relationship benefits both fish. Cleaning stations can be in the strangest places. This beautiful iron cannon, situated between Davis and Little Conk reefs in 35 feet of water, toppled overboard the San Jose of the 1733 fleet before she sank about one mile away. Underneath the cannon, we find a single neon goby busily grooming a large green moray eel. Chuck Hayes showed me this cannon in 1996. The bridal goby feeds on plankton sources close to its den, seldom venturing very high in the water table. The yellowhead jawfish lives in a sand burrow painstakingly constructed with one jaw full of sand and rock at a time. The tiny jawfish feeds on plankton sources just above the safety of its burrow. Another jawfish, the sand diver, is a torpedo-shaped powerful fish with sharp teeth. 
The sand diver can blast its way down into the sand to evade predators or hide itself in the sand to ambush smaller fish. Male jawfish incubate the eggs produced by the female in their mouths. The flame fish, a member of the cardinal fish family, has two white lines across the eye, the black spot below the rear dorsal fin, and a dark bar at the base of the tail. Another member of the cardinal fish family, the reclusive conch fish, lives in the shell with a queen conch during the day, venturing out at night to feed on tiny fish and crab. Let's take a look at the wrasse family of fish found everywhere on the reef. The slippery dick wrasse feeds primarily on tiny crabs, but will also enjoy starfish and urchins. Their front teeth and powerful jaws easily capture small fish and crab. The slippery dick is an opportunistic feeder, here scouring the wake of a spotted goatfish, looking for an easy meal. This colorful bluehead wrasse is checking out its reflection in my camera housing. The bluehead is a fast swimmer. This speed allows it to rocket high into the water table to feast on rich plankton sources, unavailable to bottom feeders. Many wrasse bury themselves in the sand at night to protect themselves from predators. These yellowhead wrasse are devouring an egg clutch protected by an exhausted sergeant major. Hogfish are the largest members of the wrasse family. Hogfish are unafraid of divers, which makes them an easy target for spearfishers who covet their flaky white meat. Hogfish explore the sand for snails, bivalve clams, and tiny crabs that they can crush with their powerful jaws. Masters of defensive camouflage, hogfish have a false eye near the base of the tail used to misdirect predators. The false eye may have saved this hogfish. Part of its tail was lost in an unsuccessful attack, but the fish survived. Check out the transformation of this hogfish as it becomes aware of my presence on a night dive. The Spanish hogfish displays a golden belly and tail with a purple upper body. Both juveniles and adults will often act as cleaner fish removing parasites from larger fish. The prolific goatfish roams the reef often in massive aggregations. Goatfish are bottom feeders. Here we see the goatfish schooling with white grunt in a massive aggregate school. A solitary spotted goatfish roots through the ocean bottom using these two barbells, which are highly sensitive receptors to detect tiny fish and crab hiding in the sand. The 
Gulf flounder is a strange looking bottom feeder whose eyes migrate to the top of its head by the time it reaches maturity. Flounder live out in the open sand flats and rely on their camouflage adaptations not only to surprise prey, but to hide from predators as well. These three spots on its top side identify the gulf flounder. Flounder feed on silver sides and tiny crab. The spotted scorpion fish is an ambush predator, a piscivore that feeds exclusively on tiny fish that don't recognize it as a predator until it's too late. Scorpion fish often flex their mouth muscles, which are used to literally suck in prey. This action keeps their jaws warmed up for a potential victim. These fish are not friendly, so leave them alone. Their dorsal fin is poisonous. The graceful four-eyed butterfly fish has a false eye near the tail fin to confuse predators. All butterfly fish have a dark stripe passing through and concealing their eyes. Butterfly fish are pelagic spawners. That is, they release their buoyant eggs into the water, which become part of the plankton, floating with the currents until hatching. The spot fin butterfly fish also has a false eye, the black spot on its tail fin. These false eyes fool predators while the butterfly fish employs defensive maneuvers to escape capture. Butterfly fish mate for life. Christmas tree worms are a popular food source for the butterfly fish. Their long mouths are perfect for nipping the crowns of the worm before they retreat deep into the recess of their protective tube. Let's take a look at the spunky damselfish, one of the most aggressive fish in the ocean. Damselfish will vigorously attack any fish or scuba diver that invades their territory. They are especially active when protecting a choice bed of algae from a rotting blue tang and wrasse. The curious angelfish is unwelcome near the Sergeant Major damselfish. Speed means survival high above the reef. The forked tail fin of the blue chromus damselfish indicates a fast swimmer capable of venturing high into the water table to feed on pelagic tunicates and fish larvae. The males protect the clutch, the eggs deposited by the female. As exhibited on Pelican Shoal Light Tower in the Lower Keys, the male Sergeant Major will fight, even against overwhelming odds, until all the larvae are consumed by these ravenous wrasse. The porcupine fish can draw in large amounts of water, inflating itself with spines erect as a defensive measure. This action exhausts the fish for several hours, leaving them susceptible to other predators. Porcupine fish have fused teeth and powerful jaws enabling them to consume hard shell clams, mussels, and baby crab. The scrawled cowfish is easily identifiable by its pattern and the two spines resembling horns above its eyes.
Cowfish and trunkfish both feed on coral polyps, algae, and Christmas tree worms, but will consume foul-tasting sponges as well. Hi-hat drum are all over the reef line. Let's take a look at two of the most prolific, diverse types of fish in the ocean, snapper and grunt. Grunt are so named by the sounds they produce by grinding their back teeth together. During the day, snapper and grunt school together on their home reef. Later, after dark, they will leave the reef to feed on tiny fish and crab in the grass flats, sometimes over one mile away. The smallest grunt, these tiny tomtate, are preyed upon by a roving school of barjack on Hen and Chicken's Patch Reef near Snake Creek in Isla Morada. Tomtate exhibit a small spot at the base of the tail and usually a lateral line across the mid-body. On this solo dive, a school of white grunt cascade over the skeletal remains of the Tonawanda, a Yankee blockade ship during the war between the states in 20 feet of gin clear water near Elbow Reef, offshore Key Largo. These white grunt are dueling over territory, a common practice known as gaping. The fish with the smaller mouth submits and leaves the area. Snapper have a sloping head and shovel nose appearance, while grunt have a more rounded facial profile. One of the friendliest of all snapper is the frisky yellowtail. Clouds of beautiful yellowtail inhabit nearly every reef and shipwreck throughout the Keys. It's easy to tell if there are a lot of daytime predators that frequent a shipwreck or reef. Here's the look down wreck in Boca Grande Channel, 10 miles west of Key West. These gray snapper are swarming rapidly, darting about in unsynchronized directions. These fish are terrified of me. This is a busy daytime feeding station for big fish. It's a cinch that large bull shark, tiger shark, and hammerhead shark frequent this wreck. Five to six foot barracuda are regularly pulled from these waters. Now, check out the lazy and different movements of these snapper and grunt on unmarked and seldom dive Maryland Shoal in the lower keys. Slow, non-threatening movements allow close observation of these fish that are definitely not reacting to me as a predator. Margate, the largest members of the grunt family of fish, like the safety of overhangs like this one on Lou Key Reef in the beautiful Lower Keys. This blue striped grunt has lost its entire dorsal fin and a big chunk of its top side in an attack by an unknown predator, possibly a barracuda. Although this fish's swimming ability is not as strong as it would be with its dorsal fin, it survives in the safety of the school. If a fish's eyes or mouth are injured in an attack, 
It can't see to eat or hunt, which is always fatal. The large eyes of the longjaw squirrelfish indicate a nighttime predator with the ability to see and hunt in low light levels. The red hue makes the squirrelfish almost invisible at night, another nocturnal hunting aid. The pole-shaped trumpetfish is an ambush predator that often disguises itself by aligning with nearby coral formations. Weaving silently through the coral, the trumpetfish is continually on the lookout for its favorite prey, cardinalfish, wrasse, and juvenile damselfish. Few sights on the reef are more awe-inspiring than a large school of blue tang streaming over the coral, searching for algae beds to plunder. Blue tang are primarily herbivores, but will switch from its typical diet to small jellyfish when they are in profusion in the water table. This is an example of the optimal foraging theory, the guiding principle of all fish feeding activities. Flexible eating habits that allow the consumption of the most abundant prey lets fish work less for more food, thus allowing extra energy for spawning, reproduction, and evading predators. These beautiful fish have colors that vary from a dark blue daytime display to a light blue with powder blue stripes at night. Blue tang have a razor sharp defensive spine at the base of their tail on both sides that retracts flat when not in use. The dark gray surgeon fish, a cousin of the blue tang, are primarily algae eating herbivores. However, surgeon fish are situational piscivores that will occasionally eat fish. Parrotfish are herbivores, feeding exclusively on plant matter. Parrotfish use their powerful beak-like mouth to scrape algal turf from coral and rock. Since algae provides few nutrients, parrotfish, like all herbivores, must consume large quantities of plant matter to satisfy their needs. As algae is consumed, so is part of the coral and rock. The coral and rock is processed, then excreted as sand, making parrotfish a major contributor to the sand on the reef line. In fact, a large parrotfish can produce nearly one ton of sand per year. When male blue parrotfish reach maturity, they develop a distinctive hump on their forehead. Many parrotfish will wrap themselves with a mucus cocoon when bedding down in the coral at night. This sleeping bag hides the scent of the parrotfish from nighttime predators. fish will eat the protective shell before moving on down the reef line. The colorful queen triggerfish has elongated tips on its dorsal and tail fins. Check out the beautiful sky blue lines across its face and the smaller dark blue lines extending from the eye, almost in a starburst pattern. Queen triggerfish have small, razor-sharp teeth that allow them to feed on fish and prey. Its tail, anal, and dorsal fins are bicolored and are all essential to the triggerfish's unorthodox swimming motion. 
the front dorsal spine of the trigger fish will lock into place, making it extremely difficult for a predator to swallow this football-shaped fish. The spine resembles the trigger of a gun. When not in use, the spine lays flat. A very aggressive fish, queen trigger fish have been known to attack divers during their spawning activities. A close relative of the trigger fish, the scrawled fowl fish, also has a front dorsal spine. However, the spine cannot be locked in a defensive effort against a predator. One of the most comical animated fish on the reef line, Popcorn the Fowl Fish amused divers for over a decade near the hole in the wall dive site on Molasses Reef offshore Key Largo. Let's meet another curious and friendly fish, the ever-present angelfish. Angelfish mate for life. These gorgeous French angelfish have golden scales and an unmistakable rounded tail. Compared to the square tail of the gray angelfish, its close cousin. Gray and French angelfish do not interbreed. When very young, French angelfish have solid yellow stripes. Gray angelfish are opportunistic feeders. Although they feed primarily on tough sponges, they will eagerly consume fish as well. Here's a different type of fish in Canada. I dropped anchor near the light tower on Hen and Chicken's Reef. I was the only diver on the reef late in the day. Suddenly I was approached and enveloped by a school of curious gray angelfish that seemed to be attempting to communicate with me. After 10 minutes of peaceful interaction, it was time for them to depart on down the reef for further adventures. Before leaving, over 25 of these amazing fish made a circular pass in front of me, which I took as another gesture of friendship from their world to mine. The fading white stripe along the body indicates a juvenile just about to reach adulthood. The queen angelfish will interbreed with the blue angelfish. The result is a Townsend angelfish. Let's check out the friendly Bermuda chub found everywhere in the Keys including the Christ of the Abyss statue on Key Largo Dry Rocks offshore Key Largo. A large relative of the Bermuda chub, the Atlantic spade fish, is another friendly shallow and deep water fish that cloud the waters of many shipwrecks and reefs.
We're on the Cannabis Cruiser Shrimp Boat in 110 feet of water, about two miles to the southwest from Alligator Lighthouse. The schooling spade fish keep a wary 25 foot distance from me. Here on Destroyer Escort Amesbury near Key West, locally known as Chet Alexander's Wreck, the spade fish make a close pass by me in shallow, 25 foot deep waters. Slow, non threatening movements and a lot of patience are required to interact with any marine creature. Although tough fiber sponges make up nearly one third of the spade fish diet, they will also feed on feather duster worms and foul smelling Gorgonian coral polyps as well. I hope you've enjoyed Volume 35 of the YouTube Keys Dive Guide channel. Join us for the next episode as the fish we identify keep getting larger and larger.